Today, I want to talk about Ryan Bell. He's a former Seventh-day Adventist pastor who decided a few years ago to spend a year living like there was no God. That's right, a pastor living without God. Long story short, as of now, to the best of my knowledge, he's living as a non-Bible-believing atheist. And if you hear him tell his story, he's living a happier and more fulfilling life. If you didn't see the coverage of Ryan Bell's faith experiment, it was all over the news, CNN, NPR, the Los Angeles Times, just to name a few. And while he was being interviewed by NPR, he had this to say about one of the main reasons that he became an atheist after living without God for a year. I don't think that God exists. I think that makes the most sense of the evidence that I have and my experience. In other words, for him, modern science refuted God. So is Ryan Bell right? Does science refute God? This is what we're going to answer today. If you've been following this series, then you know that Ryan Bell's former religion is my current religion. And you also know that my search has led me to a very different conclusion. So, how is it that everyone can be looking at the same information and come to very different conclusions as it relates to faith and the existence of God? This is episode four of my journey to figure all of that out. And any true seeker has to deal with this question of science as it relates to God. Because so many atheists say that science has refuted God and that the idea of God is old and antiquated and unnecessary in a modern and sophisticated world. Now, of course, everyone is free to look at the evidence and make a decision for themselves. But we really need to find out if God has been disproved when I decided to ask myself this question, I did what everyone else does first. That's right, I Googled it. Then I found and watched this debate that asked the same question, has science refuted God? The debate included Lawrence Krauss, a world famous atheist, scientist, and author. And this is some of what he had to say. And tonight I want to emphasize that 500 years of science have demonstrated that God, that vague notion, is not likely. It's irrational to believe in God. Now, to refute God means refuting several claims. One, that God is necessary. Two, that there is evidence for God. And three, that that belief is rational. And the point is that the progress of science has shown over and over and over again that all the answers to all those three questions are no, 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 no. That's right. In his view, science has already refuted God. And at the end of this debate, people had to vote on which view was more convincing. And more people were in support than the other side with the theists that believe in God. Now here's the thing. We can all make our votes and give our opinions. But at the end of the day, when we're having this conversation about the existence of God, everything has to go back to the beginning of the universe. And the main question is, how did we get here? How did the universe begin? And unless I'm mistaken, we only have two options. Number one, as Lawrence Krauss's best-selling book says, the universe came from nothing. Or number two, as theists put it, the universe was created by something, and they believe that something to be God. So, our two opinions are something versus nothing. Ultimately, none of us can go back in time and physically see what was there or not there before the universe existed. No matter how fancy the animations from movies that show the beginning of time, like this one, ultimately, no one can prove how the universe began. And that's just not my opinion. That's also the opinion of world famous atheist and physicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he said it in this interview with Bill Maher. Also, we don't know what was around before the Big Bang. That's kind of fun. We have some ideas, maybe a multiverse, and with one of multiple bubbles of universes coming in and out of existence. When it comes to how the universe came into existence, Tyson readily admits that he doesn't know. If you're being intellectually honest, then at least you should be willing to give both options equal value. Now back to science. The word science is used so casually, and it's used to mean so many different things. So what are we even actually talking about when someone says that science or scientific facts have disproved God? After looking and reading and listening and looking some more, I came up with a list of a few foundational facts that modern science teaches. And today, I want to see if any of these things disprove God. So here's the list. Number one, modern science teaches that the universe had a beginning. Some of us call that time. And I think everyone can agree on that. And if you saw our last video, then you saw how time could actually be used to prove the existence of God. And we'll get back to that in a future video. Numbers two, three, and four. Modern science teaches that the universe is made up of space, matter, and energy. 
That's just basic science 101 that you would learn in any fifth grade science class. Number five, modern science teaches that life comes from life, a little thing that scientists call biogenesis, as everything that's alive has come from something else that's alive. Also in this interview with Bill Maher, physicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and Richard Dawkins had this to say about the origins of life. What uh, is currently the most exciting area of scientific development? Um, the origin of life is something we don't know anything about and we want to know something about it and uh, I would love to know how life actually got started, the, the origin of the first self-replicating entity. I'm not a biologist and that's my top three things as well. Just how do you go from organic molecules to right. self-replicating life? That happened in the early Earth and it happened relatively quickly, very shortly after it could have possibly happened, yeah. it happened. Um, Essentially, he's saying that even though he believes that life began from non-life, he has no idea how it happened, and he hopes that we will find out at some future time. And Richard Dawkins said the exact same thing when asked about the origin of life. As of right now in 2023, it has never been shown that life can come from non-life. Therefore, biogenesis is still the reigning scientific fact. Number six, modern science teaches that because of genetics, one type of organism will always produce the same type of organism, which means that cats have cats, dogs have dogs, and humans have humans. Meaning that there is no observable evidence that one kind of animal or one kind of organism can turn into another kind of organism. And finally, number seven, the science of the mind, also known as psychology, teaches that humans are different from animals because we have a higher level of consciousness, because we have the ability to choose between right and wrong whatever right or wrong is, and we'll also get to that in a future video. So, this is a basic picture of what modern science teaches, and we need to find out if this list refutes God. Well, I can't speak for Brahma, the Hindu god of creation, or Ra, the Egyptian god of the sun, or any of the other gods, but let's see what the god of the Old Testament has to say about this. Now, before I answer this question, I think we need to have a little disclaimer. I'm about to read from the Bible, but today the purpose is not to try to prove God exists from the Bible. We simply want to read it to find out what it claims about the origin of the universe and the origin of life, and to see if God has been disproved by this list of what science teaches. With that in mind, let's start with the origin of the universe. Starting with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning. So, the Bible teaches that the universe had a beginning. That's time. God created the heavens. That's space and the earth, that's matter. Genesis 1 verse 3, God said, let there be light, that's energy. Genesis chapter 1 verses 11, 12, 21, 24, and 25, let the trees, grass, birds, fish, and mammals bring forth after their kind. That sounds like genetics to me. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. In other words, the claim from the Bible is that God was alive and he gave life to another life. Get it? Life comes from life. Remember, that's biogenesis. And again, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, man became a living soul, different from the animals. In other words, a higher level of consciousness. All of this right there in literally the first 35 verses of the Bible, with these scientific ideas written 3,500 years before anything that we call modern. Now for another disclaimer. I'm not saying that this proves the Judeo-Christian God is the right choice, but I think that the fact of the matter is that this account of the origin of the universe and life is in line with the proven scientific facts, which is that the universe did indeed have a beginning. The universe is made up of space, matter, and energy. Because of genetics, living things replicate after their kinds. Biogenesis, or the fact that life always comes from life, is also represented. And finally, the fact that humans have a higher level of consciousness is also presented. So now I have a question for you. Do you see that these specific points about what modern science teaches is in line with what is found in Genesis chapter 1 and 2? If you agree, please let me know why in the comments section. And if you disagree, please do the same. But here's the rules if you choose to accept it. The premise that I've made is based on this specific list of seven things. So if you agree or disagree, please stick to that list. I can't speak for the other gods, but when I look at these lists and compare them, I can honestly say that I don't see enough evidence that the Judeo-Christian God has been refuted. And so I believe that I can comfortably continue with this conversation and this search. And what about you? 
Based on these lists, can you really say that science has refuted God? I say no, but what do you say? Hope to see you again.